Hello everyone. Um, this video is going to cover comb picks. It's kind of a review of the um, Banggood 7-piece comb pick set that I ordered. It's called 7-piece uh, comb pick stainless steel lock tool locksmith tool for house lock. Alright. Um, and in a comparison I have the uh, sparrows. Um, ones over here um, which I'll discuss also now the thing about these picks uh, the reason why I got them is I, I like these sparrows picks and uh, they're in four and five pin configuration on the sparrows picks uh, they also have a top of the keyway tension tool which you know makes them kind of like dual purpose and this one even has a well sorry that was out of frame this one even has a uh, tubular lock tensioning tool built into it so it's pretty useful um, and you're wondering you know comb picks you know what do they do um, many of you already know what they do but I mean for those of you that don't a novice looking at it might think that these are rakes they're not rakes they operate on a different uh, principle now on this uh, seven piece set you get four of them with um, heat shrink on them and you get three with out and that are solid you know metal um, one of the reasons why I bought this set is the number of pins look at that some of them go up to six and seven pins that they'll potentially work on one two three four five six there's a seven pin right there I mean I've only attacked six pin locks so I don't know what a, a seven pin I, I doubt if, if you got seven pins that you're gonna put that many pins in a lock and have the tolerances so low that uh, you'll be able to use a comb pick. Let me get a, a little, this is a little Brinks core out here. Uh, so what you're basically doing with a comb pick, and, and you can't use them on everything, you, you basically got to have a wide open keyway just to get all this crap in there. You know, a single pick pin, you you might be able you know like a normal hook like this one you can get in and kind of bend it and manipulate it around but when you've got four and five and six or more things in there you pretty much gotta have a straight up shot through the keyway and what you're doing is you're pushing the key pins also up past up to this shear line you're basically getting the tooth of this thing let me see if this guy is, will fit in there you're basically getting them. See how it does that? It's pushing them all. Let me see if it's single focus. It's acting up. You're pushing all those up and creating a new shear line. If the tolerances are low enough in the lock that allows enough room in the Bible for the key pins and the driver pins and the spring all to be compressed, once you get this thing all the way up like that, you'll know you've got it because the the comb pick is flat with this. If it's down at an angle or something, then you've got one driver or one pin that, that won't compress, and it's not going to work. But once you get this all the way up, you just turn it like a key. Now, in comparison, the Sparrows set is in 30 thousandths, which makes them a lot stronger. I've never bent one of these. And, I, and believe me, I've jammed them up and done a lot of awkward stuff with them. But you, as you can see, they're in 30 thousandths. Now, these other ones, I hope you will notice how that's bent. I did that on my first attempt on these locks. They're at 23 thousandths, which is good for a pick. It'll allow you to get into other things, but this thing is a torque. Now, this may have been my own uh, fault on this because I'll, I'll demonstrate and you say what would they work on well they'll, they'll work on master lock 150s they'll on master lock 140s you even got three pin things but you'd need a three pin comb pick and I only have four I don't think they they populated it with a, uh, a four pin core you know but they might have let me let me see if this will work now what I'm doing, this is kind of a bad one to demonstrate on. You see how I'm getting that first, it's basically the last pin of the pick lined up with the first pins 
of the the first key pin and if you once you get those lined up you don't want to you don't want it to be too far back and you don't want it to be too far forward if the spacing is correct and everything else it'll allow you to drive it up there and what am I talking about on spacing well here's here's an example um, this is this uh, nice little US set American lock uh, that I got on eBay and it has a ball bearing uh, locking mechanism it's a little tiny little brass lock pretty cool uh, I haven't been able to pick this thing yet so I thought you know why don't I try to uh, see if it's susceptible to a comb pick since I have the key you can sit here and try to match up and these bang good ones you know they're pretty good in that the, you know the five, the five pin set has different spacing and different depths on the same pick also they got heat shrink in here and this little cutout helps when you're uh, manipulating the lock so let me get back to this uh, American and I can tell you that this side having them experimented with it this side is the one that's the closest to fit it um, the way I did that was kind of like I took the comb pick and I tried to line up see how that lines up perfectly almost it, 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 it might be a little bit it needs to be a little bit wider but almost perfectly lines up um, I was able to get it up there into the thing using the same method of you know looking down there and trying to line up that first pin and the tolerances are high enough on this lock that you can't drive them all up there I, the one in the very back pin pin number five in particular prevents me from going all the way up so I have a wide open keyway I have the right matching uh, pins this depth might not be deep enough on this particular one but uh, everything matches up at least on in theory but when you go to push it up there the tolerances are high enough on this lock that it will not work uh, so that's kind of good to know you know that you have a ball bearing mechanism so it's not shimmable and uh, so far as I've been able to do it I haven't been able with a comb pick or even regular picking but that's a different story because I haven't sat down and done a thorough attacking it was just like sitting down in your hands and picking it so let's go with a four pin master lock 140 to demonstrate how you do these and I'll use one of their now I'll show you how this got bent um, for one they sell a separate set that doesn't have these longer ones and you get the same setup the same depth and everything as this on uh, another pick this is basically the teeth are a little bit wider and and longer on that one if you look at it but they basically let's see if we can overlay they match up all right and everything except for no it looks like even it's exact all right so I don't know if this is cheaper metal it's it might have been like I said my technique all right so what I'm talking about that is once you get that thing lined up I'm trying, sorry to drag this thing out so long but that was going to be a relatively quick and simple review um, once you get that thing lined up in there and you position them all the way up oh wow I just opened <laughs> once you get it all the way up there and position them all the way up all you got to do is turn it like a key now what would you use this for we you know we, we do a lot of picking and you know a lot of these are really easy to open this is an expedient method uh, let's say for example you're sorry I dropped my my chronometer my caliper I mean. your friends need to uh, um, they've locked something out they don't necessarily want to see your picking skills or anything like that they just want to get into the lock quickly uh, or you yourself you know have locked yourself out for some reason and can't get into it it's as fast as a key pretty much you know when it works and uh, this set is good for that if you don't want to buy the uh, 
sparrow ones. The danger is when you when you get up here, you can get these things stuck. You can get it past pin one, where this the pin one is over here, and every other pin is trapped right behind that. And man, that thing is hard to get out. You basically have to thin wedge in another pick in front of this and try to push that pin up and work your way back. And it's a pain in the ass, basically. Um, but the problem is when you're getting up here and you think you've got them all the way up and you go to turn, you're putting torque. You're going to meet resistance and you're putting torque on that little thin piece of metal. It has to be cut out in order for it to be able to go all the way up. Let me see, where did I... The one that I bent has gone missing. I don't know what I did with it. It's vanished into thin air. Now you were watching. Oh, it's hiding under the caliper. I thought, you know, time-space distortion had happened. All right. So you see how that was twisted? And I, again, I, I say this, this might have been my own fault. Now, this is a, a four-pin lock. Sometimes you can fit a five pin in there. No, nope. it's not going to work. And I'm basically, I was using that on the, mas the Master 150 when I bent it. But you line them up and let's see if we can get this one to work. And you get it all the way up in there. And you should be able to twist, uh, twist it open. And this is the one that I bent it on because I got up there and I started twisting when I thought I had it. And if you do that, you're basically going to bend, especially this one. Now, not the spare ones; those are thirty thousandths, and you'll you'll meet enough resistance. So this one, I don't know. I've I've had it in there and gotten it open, but being camera shy for a, a comb pick attack so um basically this set ran me six dollars and 99 cents i think the other one's only like four dollars and something and i believe the sparrows ones were like 15 i'm not sure i have to check that again but um i'm not completely unhappy with my purchase because i'd wondered about would a would it work on a on an American lock or a Schlage type of cylinder on these bigger ones? And I, I've yet to try those out. Um, th and this video is already at 13 minutes, so I, I ran my mouth a little bit too much. But all in all, I would have to say that um, they can be a useful addition to your set. Just be careful with them, as far as like. Uh, when you think you've got it set, like I said, it's got to be, when it's set properly, and I know this is the seven pin, but it's just an example. When it's set properly, it'll go all the way up, all the way up, and it'll be lined, and you'll just be able to turn. I mean, you saw that on that Master 140, it just like pop one open. It'll work on some brinks. There's some brinks that, uh, I don't know, it won't work on because uh, maybe they got the tolerances right or they put a bigger driver pin. Also, if you have uh, Master Lock came out with uh, those bump stop ones, those bump stop type of uh, uh, locks, the driver pin is quite a bit longer than your standard uh, drivers up there in the in the Bible, and that, that would prevent you know the key pin, I think, because a lot of times they have a really small key pin on the on that bump stop one, so you might be able to still push them all up in there, but it might also prevent comb picking so there you go it's something that uh, would be more useful for like a locksmith or anybody that's doing a you know as in any bypass method you're not really picking you're just bypassing and uh, they work they work quickly and it's something that would be a good addition to have in your kit if you ever encounter um, a lock that you've been given permission to pick but uh, still need to open and it's not yours you know like example you know friends locker you know they you know they own it and whatever and they need to get in it and then you know, they don't necessarily want to see your skills at picking you know and you could be under pressure also uh, by doing that 
So there you go. I'm sorry I dragged this thing out to 15 minutes. <laughs>